We'll now have the presentation of the military honors and military veterans salute and everyone else please put your hand over your heart and would you stand then for the playing of taps. He made me see him.
That certainly is quite moving and deserved. On Gail's behalf and the behalf of uh, Bill's family, I want to welcome you this morning and thank you for your presence here. No doubt, no doubt there will be many more here, Gail, that um, do not feel that they can get out right now with the COVID situation. So there are many others in spirit who are with you who are thinking of you right now, and we're, we're glad to say that later, possibly later today, but by tomorrow, the, the service is being recorded and will be made available uh, at a link that we can provide, or uh, the recording will be provided to the family. On April 19th, 1948, Up in Akron, Ohio, Lucille and Walter Gregory had a baby boy, and they named him William. And after 72 years of a blessed life, William, or Bill, Frederick Gregory Sr. was living here in Dickinson when he passed from this life suddenly on January 12th, just a few days ago, in Texas City. But as you could see, Bill was an Army veteran, and he worked on the UH-1, the Iroquois Huey helicopters that are so familiar to us from films and from those who lived through that era and served in that era. He also worked later in his life several years for Barnes Distribution, he leaves behind to cherish his memory, his loving wife of 49 years, almost 50 years, his wife Gail, his daughters Annalisa Gregory and Aubrey Gregory, his sons William F. Gregory Jr. and his wife Melanie, and David Matthew Gregory and his wife Stacy, and Stephen Wesley Gregory, grandchildren. Janet Nicole, and Liam Austin, and Madeline Elizabeth, and Grayson Alexander, his sister Kim Miller, and her husband Matt, and of course numerous other family members and friends through whom the Lord touched so many lives in so many different ways. And there's this beautiful line that the family provided in the obituary that I want to share with you. It says, Bill was a kind and gentle soul that had a heart to help others, giving freely to make sure that others were cared for. He was selfless and compassionate, and he will be remembered as a devoted husband and father and grandfather, a brother and friend. In Psalm 116, we read, I love the Lord because he has heard my voice and my pleas for mercy. And because he inclines his ear to me, therefore I will call on him as long as I live. The snares of death encompass me, the pangs of Sheol laid hold on me, and I suffered distress and anguish. And then I called on the name of the Lord. O Lord, I pray, deliver my soul. And gracious is the Lord and righteous. Our God is merciful. And the Lord preserves the simple. When I was brought low, he saved me. Return, O my soul, to your rest, for the Lord has dealt bountifully with you. For you have delivered my soul from death and my eyes from tears and my feet from stumbling. I will walk before the Lord in the land of the living. What shall I render to the Lord for all of his benefits to me? I will lift up the cup of salvation and call on the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows to the Lord in the presence of all of his people. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. Let's pray together. 
Holy Father, great God in heaven, truly you are merciful, Lord. And truly you have delivered us from death through the death of your own Son on our behalf. And you do dry our tears, Lord, and keep our feet from stumbling. O Lord, you see and you know and you bless as we have need. And so at this time, we ask you, Lord, to bless the family. We know this is a hard, it's a hard time right now for Gail. Her heart is heavy as, it, as are the hearts of, of all in their family, but we plead with you, dear Lord, to look down in your tender mercy and put your hand upon them now, Father. Grant them comfort and strength through this service. Our prayer is that as we remember our brother Bill, that these memories would bring comfort and that reflection on his life would bring glory to your name. And that's our prayer, Father, in the name of Christ our Lord. Amen. I just hope I can get through this, so please bear with me. Thank you for coming to celebrate the life of your friend and my father, Hill Gregory. <clears throat> I'll try not to keep you for too long. As much as my father liked a good sermon, he also liked getting to lunch on time, so I'll try to be brief. What I remember most about my father was his array of hobbies. My father had many passions in his life motorcycles, firearms, deer hunting, and music, to name just a few. Many don't know this, but 
As you've seen in the photos, my, my parents were married on a motorcycle, and my father had won several racing trophies. His passions continued until I was born, and he felt that risking his life for a hobby was probably not the most responsible thing to do anymore. But he held his passion for riding and was able to do it again once he retired and able to purchase a bike again. He did this till he lost his vision in his right eye due to a motorcycle accident. Sadly, Dad was never able to ride again, but Dad was never one to complain too much about setbacks. He told me he hardly even noticed the injury, and he had an excuse to dress as a pirate. So, Dad also loved his firearms. When Dad and my Uncle Denny would get together when I was younger, you could swear they're speaking in some kind of code, talking makes and millimeters, and to this day, I still have no idea what they were talking about. He did, though, teach us how to be safe around guns and to realize that they were just a tool like a hammer and they only moved when you moved them. I think his time in Vietnam taught him how dev devastating these tools can be and that taking a life in war or self-defense was a serious thing and to, to respect life because life can end in an instant. With Dad's love of firearms came his love of deer hunting which, much to my father's dismay, became more often than not a long walk, walk in the woods with a firearm strapped to his back. My dad didn't have much luck with the hunting department, but he spent spending time with him in the woods looking for tracks and listening for nature itself was some of my fondest memories with my dad. And many of you spent time with my dad during church camping trips where he would tend the fire and make sure that the children were safe and, and, and uh, no one got hurt. I think he enjoyed the whole outdoor experience because it allowed him to spend just a little time back in nature. I believe my dad loved nature from a young age because his sister Kim told me stories about how dad and my, my uncle Mike would spend time out in nature at a place called the Gorge, very close to his own grandfather's home. And once my Aunt Kim was born, many years later, my dad would bring her there as well to enjoy nature. Having been there myself with my oldest daughter, Janet, I can see how this place was so special to my dad. And I'm glad I had the chance to share it with, he had the chance to share it with us. And many didn't know about my dad's love of music. I found this out on the many road trips we took to visit my Aunt Kim in Ohio or my aunts in Georgia and Florida. During these road trips, Dad usually drove and listened to the oldie station. I'm not sure who, but somebody would ask him, who was that? who's that on the radio, Dad? And not only could he answer the name of the song, the person who sung it, but he could tell you which side of the record it could be found on. It was quite amazing. And my dad had another unusual ta talent involving traveling long distances and, and going out of state, is that he could go to a town he hadn't seen 10, 15, 20 years, and he could give directions to locals. He never got lost. He could always find his way anywhere, even if he hadn't been there in forever. And this was re very reassuring in a time before Google Maps and when men didn't ask for directions. So now I tried to think of a way to best encompass my dad, and, and when that didn't work, I went to the Bible. And I came up with 1 Corinthians 13, 4 through 7. Love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. It does not dishonor others. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, and always perseveres. But let me read it to you this way, to best understand my father. Dad was patient, especially with little children. Dad was very kind to every stranger. He did not envy what he did not have. He did not boast on the things he did. He was not prideful in anything but his children. Dad did not dishonor others or their memory. He was not self-seeking, but sought to help others. Dad was not uh, easily angered. Well, you just ask anybody, really. He kept no record of wrongdoings. Okay, to be honest, he tried on this one. Dad had a forgiving heart, but he had a very long memory. He could forgive you, but you're on his list, just saying. 
Dad did not rejoice in evil, but in truth, even if no one else could see it, he always protected those around him. He always trusted in the good in the others, even if it was not returned. He always hoped in, that those he helped would be better for it. Always persevered in the face of loss and disappointment. In my last phone call with my father, I did not tell him I loved him. But I did ask him to say, thick thorny thistles on a thatch roof. And you may ask why. Well, my father had dental surgery a couple days prior, and he had no front teeth. And he laughed, and, and it was, you know, uh, he understood that, that uh, I understood his suffering, and, and that, um, you know, uh, to be able to get him to laugh at such a silly thing was um, something that we, we, we did to each other all the time. Uh, though I didn't say I loved him at that time, I know he knew I loved him for the last 15 years or so. Because I knew time is short, I uh, made it a point to tell him that I loved him as much as I could. And I encourage you to do the same. And because I got the chance to, spend, to share my humor that I inherited from him, I feel that was just as good as any I love you I could produce at the time. A humor I'm sure you've all experienced with dad's silly dad jokes and funny stories. In closing, please remember Bill Gregory was your friend. Even if you only spoke one word to him in passing, or spoke only on Sundays, he was your friend. Let me give you an example of why I believe this. Mom once told me that Dad would go out of his way to speak to any veteran he saw, usually those wearing a hat, vest, or t-shirt, stating that they had served. He would talk, shared experiences, and show interest in a stranger's life. He would try and connect with them because he understood the nightmares. The feeling of dread when trying to open a tube of refrigerated biscuits because he just couldn't stand that pop. My dad cared for the well-being of so many people in his life. My father would offer help, often offer help to people who need it, offering to get them to a doctor's appointment, get them food, or a roof over their head. At one point in my life, there were three families living in my home, five adults and nine children. I look at this house today and I have absolutely no idea how all those people lived there, but I know why they did. Every one of those souls needed just a little bit of help, and that was the nature of my father. When dad retired, he told me that the one thing he missed most about work spending time with his friends. He did not have clients. He had friends that he went and got to know personally, and anything that he sold was just a bonus. He would often spend hours, a couple hours a week, at a local diner or a local coffee auto shop and talk the world's problems over and solve them most nights, he said, with his perfect strangers, which for that night, they were his closest friends. So remember, when you go home tonight, remember to hug your family and to remember the world has lost a friend. But the world is a better place because he was here. Now I have a few uh, notes passed to me by family members that I'd like to read for them, if you bear with me for just another moment. <laughs> My daughter Janet has this to say. I remember the time when I was a toddler. I actually drank grandfather's bottle of Coca-Cola. He was mad at first, but then decided to take a picture because he just thought I was too cute. I also remember grandpa used to order anchovies both with and on his pizza. When I was five, I asked him, what is he eating? And he told me anchovies. He gave me a strip and I tried it and I've been eating and ordering them on my pizza ever since. Love you, Grandpa Gregory. Liam, my 
son has said he was a good grandfather. And his grandfather would appreciate that because it's concise and to the point. Ottawisa, my sister, has said, my dad was such a kind, loving soul. He taught me how to be the same. He gave me unconditional love and support no matter how much I messed up. He gave me and my siblings someone to see and call dad, which for me, at least, was something I could never really do before that. Thanks, dad, for all the laughter. The fun times, being my personal chauffeur, and giving me advice I will always carry with me. I want to leave y'all today with one of the most important things he ever told me. It isn't what you say, but how you say it. So be kind, be godly, and be a friend. I love you always, Daddy. Again, thank you very much for coming. Rick, that was, that was beautiful. And um, you don't know how you honored your dad by doing that on behalf of yourself and the family. I'm going to remember that, and I think I can agree with what you said about what a faithful legacy that your dad has left in everything except the anchovies. That one, I'm just going to have to leave him in the mercy of God for... for. Are you with me, Gail? Okay. Okay. <laughs> I thought, uh, again, just a couple thoughts and a, a scripture that comes to mind, and it immediately filled my heart every time I saw you and your husband together, Gail, every time I saw you and Bill with, with the kids. And just, I, I'll, I'll tell you more about that when we get to the passage in Romans 8. But I thought I'd share with you just a little bit. You mentioned the motorcycles and stuff and how Gail and Bill met. She said that she's a Georgia girl, right? And he's from Ohio, so he was, they met at college down in Georgia. And then after he graduated, she had to stay on a little longer. He went, he went back to Ohio, and they, they had just met for a couple of months, and they carried on their relationship over the phone. And he finally... <clears throat> proposed to her over the phone, right? And you accepted it over the phone. <laughs> and I thought that was uh, kind of neat. And then they worked, you know, to, 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 until they could save up the money and finally get together and, and get married. And it was uh, on the bikes. You know, they were part of a motorcycle club. How about that? Uh, those of you who have bikes. And um, she said they, they drove off, you know, the recessional she was on the gold wing, right, with Bill and streamers flowing off the back of the bike. So I want you to picture little, little Gail uh, with Bill in that way. And looking at some of those, those pictures, I know Gail and, and guys, I know there's a big story behind every one. I'd love to hear all about every single one of them. They're beautiful pictures that just bring up, I'm sure, some some beautiful, comforting thoughts that you can take with you. Um, we're here because the Lord brought you and Bill together, Gail. And when you think of all that he worked in your life and his for that to come together. And especially when I think of his service in Vietnam, and that was after you met or before? That was before, right? And... The whole time they were folding the flag and playing taps, I was thinking of Bill in those helicopters as this young guy and, and all the ones that didn't come back that were shot down or had, uh, had to endure some, some horrible experiences and didn't get, get to go on with the rest of their life like Bill did. But I'm thankful by the grace of God that he made it through that period and, uh, and that God worked things to get him to Georgia, to get him to Gale, to bring them together, and then to bring all these children together like we see. What a, what a beautiful thing. One, one last story about the motorcycle and then our scripture. Uh, Gale told me this uh, 
I hope it's okay. I think it's okay. I tell it right, Gail. That when he had that accident and went over the handlebars and, and he lost the sight in one eye, that's how badly, and he was wearing a full face helmet and he still was injured that seriously. But however it occurred, the bike went down into the ditch and the forks dug in and he, he went flying over the, over the top, or he went flying through the air onto the ground. Well, she said later when the paramedics were there and they were thinking about care flighting him to the hospital, he said, look, I've already flown once today. I think that was enough <laughs> for one day, right? <laughs> that gave me a good little window into the kind of guy that, uh, that Bill was and is and still is. Now, as far as my, I don't know the family as well as all of you who have been here for many, many years with them at the League City Congregation. Seeing the picture of him at the camp and mentioning the campouts, what I heard from several different people, they all told me when, when you had the family campouts, Bill was the guy that liked to tend the fire and showed the other kids how to tend the fire. And he, he just had that kind of heart. And that's an image that stays with me as well. But it shows me, too, that he loved his brothers and sisters here, and he loved the kids here. And it wasn't just about coming on Sunday and sitting in the pew and being a Sunday morning only Christian, but he wanted to be around the brothers and sisters in Christ, and he wanted his kids to be around the other kids in the church, and he still wants that. And Gail, they both uh, work diligently, and I know Gail's going to continue that legacy to do what they can to lead their children to know, to know the Lord. But the passage that comes to my mind, Gail, that I think about with regard to your family is, is where in Romans 8, it's one of a few places in the scripture, but I think it's the most beautiful, that tells us about adoption. So I want you kids to think about how in, in the word of God, we're told that God loves us so much that he adopted us to be his children. He made us his family. He took us in and made us his own and became to us a father. So when I think about, you talked about, Rick, bringing people into your home, and I think about you bringing children into your home to make them your children and to take care of those kids and to show them that love, that that's a reflection of the love of God and we read about that here in Romans 8. Paul says, So then, brothers, we're debtors not to the flesh to live according to the flesh, for if you live according to the flesh, you'll die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the flesh, you'll live. For all who are led by the Spirit, now listen, are children, children of God. For you did not receive the spirit of slavery to fall back into spirit into fear you receive the spirit of adoption as sons by whom we cry Abba Father in other words he loved us so much he made us his children so that we could even call on him not just as our creator and not just even as our father but affectionately and intimately as our father Abba Father and the Spirit bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if we're children, see, this is what matters most right now as we think about Bill. If we're children, then we're heirs of God. See, then we inherit. God is our Father, and we inherit what he has for his children. Heirs of God and fellow heirs with Christ, provided we suffer with him in order that we might be glorified with him. So then Paul goes on to talk about how that love that God showed in adopting us and conforming us to be like his son, to be a part of his family. I and mean, we know that you loved and love your boys, your flesh and blood, and you love these other children like your flesh and blood. And that love, Paul, Paul said, nothing can separate us from that love, not even death. He goes on to say, for I am sure that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, 
nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature can separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ. Not even Bill's death can separate us, can separate him from the love of Christ. And in fact, it has, it has united him with Christ. If we've been baptized into Christ for the remission of our sins and followed the Lord faithfully, that, that's the hope we have, that we're heirs of God, when we pass from this life, we wait to be reunited in the resurrection and to share in that eternal inheritance, that eternal glory. And the way, the way that John put it is, behold what manner of love he's bestowed upon us that we should be the children of God. And we are his children. And it's not yet manifested what we shall be, but we know when he is manifested, we shall be like him for we will see him as he is. So we're his children. And one day we're going, to see, we're going to be together again when we all get to see Jesus and enjoy the glory of the Lord as his children forever and ever. So the love that, that you have shown in your life is, Gail, you're going to continue that legacy. You're stronger than you know. I know you feel a heavy burden taking care of a family now. Your brothers and sisters love you. Your family loves you. Be strong in the Lord. It's not your strength. You're not strong enough. But the Lord, the strength of the Lord, will help carry you through each day. Trust in Him. That's my encouragement to all of you today to love and encourage and support your mother and your brothers and sisters and use this blessing of family that the Lord has given to you. It's a beautiful thing. And we praise God for it. Let's pray together. Holy Father, great God in heaven, you know the, the sorrow that Gail and her family, the family, the, the, the boys and, all, and the daughters, all of them are feeling right now in the passing of Bill All the years ago that Kim grew up with him, Father, and all the memories that come back to her, the extended family, and his spiritual family, Lord, thank you for how you touched your church here through the faithfulness of Gail and Bill and their love for you and your church, their love for their children. All the years that they've had here, Father, mean so much. And we know that Gail is going to continue to be that shining example and that her faith, even through this, this difficult hour of her life, her faith and your grace at work in her life is going to reflect that same love that they have shown all these years, Father. So bless her and bless all the children, bless their families, keep them, Lord. We're, even though Bill passed suddenly, Father, we're thankful. We're thankful he did not have to go through a long, protracted illness, that he did not have to suffer many hours and days lingering, Lord. Uh, as sudden as his passing was, we're thankful that, that he could depart finally to be with you. We, we rejoice in that. We thank you for that. And we know that's what Bill would want for all of us and for all of his family, for us to love you with all of our hearts and souls and minds and strength and to serve you in truth with all of our hearts so that we can be together again in your presence. Strengthen Annalisa, Lord, in her life. Aubrey, Stephen, we know this is a difficult time, especially for them. And thank you for the beautiful words that you put in Rick's heart and the strength you gave him to share such wonderful things with us. This has been a beautiful time together, Lord, and we want you to be honored and glorified in this and in all things now and forever, we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. If you did not have a chance to do so already, please feel free to... Uh, Come and give your regards to the family. We, we know we do need to still follow some protocol, of course, with, uh, with regard to the COVID situation. But as comfortable as you feel, 
uh, please um, come and share your hearts with them. And I, we'll be dismissed with this benediction. May the, the grace of our Lord Jesus and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. We're dismissed. <laughs>